Right, guys, now let's take a closer look at question 10, which is based on Euclidean geometry from the metric paper of 2022. It was paper 2. Without any waste of time, let's jump right into it. So question 10 reads as follows. It says, in the diagram, PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so KP is a tangent to the circle at P. C and D are points on chords, PQ and PS respectively, and CD produced meets RS produced at A. CA is parallel to QS. RC is drawn and angle P1 is equal to angle R2. All right, now what's the first thing here? Well, let's say prove giving reasons that angle S1 is equal to angle T2. So we're trying to prove S1 is the same as angle T2. So I'll put them in green dots here. We're trying to find what is this one? S1 and what is this one? Angle T2. We're just trying to prove that those two angles are going to come out the same. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do is just maybe jot down the information that we've been given. For example, somebody said that this is a tangent. That might be very useful. Okay. Now the second thing that I was told is that uh, these lines are parallel. Maybe if I just highlight them like this, I'll be able to take note of them when I need to. And then uh, maybe lastly, the most important thing here is the fact that we were told that angle P1 is the same as angle R2. So I'm going to say let angle P1 be X. So that means if P1 is X, that implies that angle R2 will also be the same and it also have a value of X. So I've got those. I've just uh, put them there. So I'll obviously have to be nice and say let P1 be X. So I'm going to say to the examiner, please let me allow okay, angle P1 to be equal to that angle R2. You told me this, but please just let me call them X. If you do this, it makes the whole calculations uh, of trying to figure out relationships much more easier because the brain can comprehend those relations better than uh, trying to work with R1s and T1s and T2s and C1s and it's a bit more complicated. Okay, so uh, let's see what we know so far. We're trying to find the value of uh, angle S1 or maybe the value of angle T2. So if I look, for example, at just this angle T2 that I'm looking at here, right? I can see here that I can be able to figure out what T2 is uh, if I know what T3 is or if I know what T1 is or if I know the interior angles of the triangle TCQ. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all say, okay, let me figure out, call the, the Q value here, angle Q2. I'm going to call angle Q2 Y. So I'm going to say, I want to introduce a Y for this one here and I'm going to use that to figure out angle T2. It's going to be the exterior angle of triangle TRQ. It will obviously be the sum of those interior opposite angles. Okay, it's going to be equal to the sum of those interior opposite angles. So I'm going to say to the examiner, let Q2 be Y, and then I can be able to figure out what the value of T2 is going to be. Okay, and please let angle Q2 be equal to Y, just for fun, because it's going to make my math a bit more easier. Okay, Q2 is Y. Now, I can then be able to say from that information, angle T2 is going to be X plus Y, and the reason is because it is the exterior angle of a triangle and those are always equal to, to the sum of the interior opposite angles. Okay, very important. Interior opposite angles, that's the relationship that we know. That's what I get as the value of angle T2. So now if my T2 comes out as that, okay, if T2 comes out as just this combination of X and Y, I can then be able to say, for me to be able to work out the correct solution of what I want to work out now, I just have to also show that this is going to come out as x plus y. I have to show that uh, S1 is also going to come out as x plus y. But then it turns out that it does, because if you look closely, this right here is a cyclic quad. So in this cyclic quad that I'm looking at, that S1 becomes the exterior angle of the cyclic quad. And we know that the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So if you take Q1 and you combine it, Okay, this Q1 here, and you combine it with Q2, you'll be able to figure out what S is going to be. But that Q1 that you're sitting with is on a tan court relationship with angle P1. In case you're wondering what I'm talking about, if you look closely at the circle, and then there's point P here right at the bottom with that tiny, tiny, tiny uh, uh, what do you call it, tiny tangent, KP. From this, you go to Q, all right, and then you go back to point S, okay, 
So if you close this, you are looking at the time chord relationship there. But this is only including Q1. So Q1 and P1 are going to be equal via time chord. Okay? So that will maybe allow me to then say this is X. And once I have X there, I've completed this question. I can then claim that S1 is also going to be that. So let's start first of all by saying angle Q1 is equal to angle P1, which makes it X as well. And the reason there is time chord. Okay? Um, now... Uh, but angle S1 is equal to angle Q1 plus angle Q2. It's the exterior angle of slightly quad. Okay, it's the exterior angle of slightly quad. Therefore, angle S will also be equal to X plus Y because it's equal to Q1 plus Q2. And Q1 is X and Q2 is Y. And since T is also the same thing, x plus y and s is also the same thing x plus y therefore angle s1 equals to angle t2 okay proven awesome now maybe before we even go to the next question it actually helps for you to put the values of the stuff that you figured out because there's a reason why these questions are asked in that order so i'm going to come back here and say oh this angle here is going to be x plus y um we've got all the things we've worked out let's just label them then the drawing if we need to use them later on we'll just come back to them okay sweet Right, okay, okay, good. Now, let's move on. Uh, the next question says we need to prove that uh, AD divided by AR is equal to AS divided by AC. Now, for us to be able to prove these ratios, okay, we have to check if these uh, sides that are um, in the same triangle that can form a proportionality relationship, or do we have to find two triangles and prove that they're similar? So you try and find uh, if they're in the same triangle, then you'll do proportionality theorem relationship. Uh, if it's not that, then it's going to be uh, working it not via congruency, but via similarity, okay? That's one other way of doing it. Now, it turns out in this one, the AD and the AR, let's go and find where they are. AD and AR, allow me to just delete uh, this slightly quad just to clear the, uh, the noise here, and then we can be able to focus on what is going on and get the answers to the questions that you guys are supposed to be worried about. Okay, so uh, AS here, let's see from A to point S, there's my AS there. They want me to do AS divided by AR, uh, AD and AR, it's actually AD and AR. So there's AD here, okay, and then there is AR, there's AS and there's AC. Okay, so I think we have to also engage, we'll call this one the yellow triangle, goes from here to there, and then it's the bigger triangle. So it's two triangles here. I'm comparing two triangles. Uh, the yellow triangle versus uh, the green triangle. We're trying to prove that those two triangles are similar. For them to be similar, remember we're just interested in proving that their corresponding angles are going to be the same. You can clearly see that they already share the same angle, angle A there. It's a common angle to both the yellow triangle as well as uh, the green triangle. And then once I have them, uh, if once I find another angle that is equal to uh, the other one, then I'll be happy. I'll just tell you that, okay, those two triangles are similar. So what are we going to say? We're going to say, okay, we're discarding this. We're going to use similarities to try and prove this. We're going to say in triangle, uh, the first one is triangle A, S, D. That's the little one. And the second triangle is triangle uh, A, uh, CR, okay, very important. The order is going to matter. It doesn't have to matter now, but later on when you make the conclusion, that order is going to matter. So triangle ASD and triangle ACR is the small triangle and the big triangle, okay? Small triangle and the big triangle. The small triangle has angle A and the big triangle also has angle A. So they both share angle A, so angle A is common. That's the first thing, okay? That's the first thing that I'm going to claim there. I'm going to say, oh, well, uh, angle A is common. Remember, I only need two. Okay, I uh, only need two angles that are equal. The third one will be automatically uh, equal. So let's find another angle that is equal to the other one. It turns out that if you look at the relationship going on here, okay, this one here, there's a Z going on here. So this angle I want in the yellow triangle, which happens to be angle C2, is going to be X plus Y because it's equal to T2. And that's because they're alternate angles since those two lines are parallel. Okay, so that's just literally feeding the X plus uh, y in here and if that's x plus y already in the green triangle i have another x plus y so that makes it very nice to see that we now have another pair of equal angles so i'm gonna take c2 from t2 and take it to s1 c2 from c2 i'll say angle c2 
Okay, let's get the consistency of color there. Angle C2 equals to angle T2, which is going to make it X plus Y. And the reason is because uh, those are alternate angles. Since we've got a pair of parallel lines there, we have to mention which lines are parallel quickly. It's because the line AC is parallel to the line SQ. AC is parallel to AQ. AC is parallel to AQ. Not AQ, it can be SQ. I think it's going to be SQ. Yes, SQ. Uh, so maybe I'm not ready for the third one. Let's just quickly finish off here and say, therefore, angle C2 equals to angle S1 uh, because they're both equal to T, uh, T2 and they're both equal to X plus Y. Okay, we proved that T2 is equal to S1 in the previous question. And therefore, now the third pair of angles is going to be equal, right? Therefore, uh, we can see that uh, angle D1 will also be equal to angle R1, okay? The third pair will also be equal. Which pair is this pair that I'm talking about? I'll put this pair in blue. It means that the angle here will now be equal to the angle there. So all the angles in the yellow triangle have an angle that they're equal to in the green triangle. So quickly, we can then say to the examiner, therefore, the triangles are congruent, okay? Therefore, triangle ASD is going to be uh, not congruent, but similar, okay? Triangle ASD is going to uh, definitely be similar to triangle ACR. All right, and then of course we need to provide the reason for that. And the reason for why this is true will be uh, angle, angle, angle. You can use AZ if you like, okay? And then after you've proved the similarity, then we can try and build the proportional sides because if two triangles are similar, then the corresponding sides are in equal proportions. And how do you do that? You take this divided by that, okay? Uh, so AS divided by AC will be equal to, and then you take this divided by that. What's that? That's actually uh, SD divided by CR, and then that will be equal to uh, this here divided by that. It's going to be equal to AD divided by AR, and this is possible because we've got similar triangles, okay? So it's very, very important for you to have that. So you can see your AD and your AR, your AS, and your AC there are the ones that they wanted us to prove in the question. Okay, what did they want us to show? A, D, A, R, A, S, A, C. Okay, that means now from this particular pair and this particular pair, we've got what we're looking for now. Therefore, A, S divided by A, C equals to A, D divided by A, R. Very powerful question indeed. Now, last one uh, says we now need to show that A, C multiplied by S, D equals to AR multiplied by TC. So uh, I'm going to try and see where are these things. Okay, I can already see where AS is. I mean, if I am looking at what I'm trying to do versus what we just did in the previous question, okay, what, what we've done in the previous question, we've done AD and AR, we can see them, we've done AS and AC, we've seen them. Now what we're trying to prove has AC, okay? It has this, okay, which appears in the previous question. It also has AR, it has this which appears in the previous question. I can see there's AC there and there's AR there. So I've got those two and I'm happy about them. But we need to get rid of that AS at the top and the AD at the top, okay? We need to get rid of that. And make way for what? For SD and make way for what as well? For TC, okay? Very important. Now, what I'm gonna do is go back to the drawing and try and check this SD and the TC, where are they? Because I wanna know what are they? This, what is SD in the drawing? And what is TC in the drawing, okay? What are those things in the drawing? All right, let's go back and check them. Now, when I go back here, I see AC is um, the length of the side here on the left-hand side, okay? It happens to be the length of the side on the left-hand side, so I'm just gonna clear everything here so that there's less noise, and we can, we can be able to uh, nicely follow what's going on in the question, right? So, if you look closely, what do we know? Well, the side that they're talking about, the AC and the SD, AC is from A to C, okay? It's all that, there's AC. All right, and then what else does SD? SD is from here to here, okay? What else is there? They have AR. A from A to R, there's A all the way to R, okay? And then they have a, a R and they've got TC. TC is this one here, okay? So it looks like if we bought this and we had a proportionality relationship happening because we've got two lines that are parallel, we can be able to get something going here, okay? So I'm gonna say if I join here, I can be able to build a proportionality relationship of some sort going on in those in that big triangle because 
uh, when we've got parallel lines, you can be able to build a proportionality relationship. So that proportionality relationship will include a S in it, and then we can be able to take it from there and see uh, where is that going to lead us. All right. So let's go back and try and say in that triangle that you were looking at over there, what does that triangle look like? It's got uh, point A here. It's got point C somewhere here. It goes all the way to point R. It comes back to C. And then it's got this particular line that goes to S and also comes back uh, to T. So I'm going to build my proportionality ratio there uh, by using uh, the following. I'm going to say AS divided by AR, which is short over long. That's how I'm going with this. So the short one over the long one will be the short over the long on the other side. And that's because of the proportionality theorem. OK, so let's go back here and put it right here. So I will say um, AS divided by AR should be the same as CT divided by CR. This is because of the prop theo, okay, proportionality theorem, since we've got uh, AC being parallel to ST. Remember, they told us that these ones are parallel, so uh, it allows us to make this claim. Now, from this, I can make uh, AS, AS the subject of the formula. AS is AR multiplied by CT divided by CR. Why am I making AS the subject of the formula? It's a common factor that I'm seeing here and what I'm seeing in the previous relationship. So from that relationship, I can make AS the subject again. I'll say AS is, when you just cross multiply this over there, you'll get AD multiplied by AC divided by AR. Now, this is awesome news because then they, they, these things also have the same denominator. So that means I can take the result at the top. This result that I have um, in, in here from the blue box, let's put this, this result here. Okay, I'll take that AD times AR and equate it to what we have here at the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to say, okay, that's the same. Okay, as uh, AD multiplied by AC divided by AR. Okay, not there, not there, but uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Is that AR or CR? What is it? Okay, I think it says AR, AS, AC, AD, AR. Okay, let's go back and try and pull the relationship that's got CR in it. So from this relationship, I'm now going to take this one and that one over there because I'm after the CR, okay? I'm after the CR. So I'm going to abandon the one that has got AR in it. I will take AS and AC equated to SD and CR. We'll take the first two. I will take the first two from the proportionality, from the, uh, from, yeah, from the, uh, yes, from the, from the similarity relationship, okay? Let's uh, abandon this one for a second so that it works much faster. Otherwise, I'll have to go in circles trying to find the answer here uh, since this one is going to take us the longer route. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back. I'm going to put it here so that you guys can see. Uh, remember, we know that triangle, um, what's the triangle ASD from the previous calculation similar to triangle ACR. We know this information. And then after that, we could build the proportionality ratios AS over uh, AC equals to SD over CR equals to AD over AR. Now I am going to match this pair with this pair because I'm still after AS there, right? I'm still after AS. So I think we also need to remove this relationship that we were trying to squeeze in here. Okay, let's leave AS as it is in the above relationship and then uh, try and build it like another one here from this. Okay, so quickly. From what I'm looking at here, I can say um, AS is then going to be equal to SD multiplied by AC divided by CR. This is what I was looking for. I wanted them to have the same denominator. So if the one AS is given on the left hand side and the other AS from the proportionality is given or from the similarities given on the other side, I can then equate uh, those two. You can quickly say, therefore, uh, SD times AC divided by CR equals to the other AS that I got at the top, uh, ARCT, ARCT, AR multiplied by CT divided by CR. That's coming from the second one, from the sec second one here, this one over here, okay? That's where it's coming, right. Now I've got both of them, uh, I think the CR is common, so the CR will cancel. Eventually when it cancels on both sides, you end up with exactly what they wanted us to have, which is AC multiplied by uh, SD is equals to uh, AR uh, multiplied by CT. Okay, so it's a very interesting geometry question that is based on a lot of ideas 
involving everything that has to do with similarity and proportionality all coming together at once in the same question. It requires you a lot of analysis, so if you do more and more of this, you actually get better and better.